Hi everyone, in this video I'll be going over the apply your learning questions from the formulas and ionic compounds unit. Before we begin with our apply your learning questions, one thing that will be crucial to note as we move through these questions is ionic compound nomenclature. So the procedure for naming ionic compounds will help us to recognize ionic compounds and also learn how to name our own ionic compounds. So when naming an ionic compound, you first start with the normal name of the cation, which is the ion with the positive charge, followed by the stem of the name of the anion, followed by ide. So when we see a compound ending in ide, we can assume that it is an ionic compound. And this is the procedure that we'll follow if we're naming an ionic compound given to us. So let's look at number one now. Number one is asking, what is the chemical formula of calcium chloride? So we see the suffix ide attached to our name, so we can assume that it's an ionic compound. Going off of the nomenclature, we see that calcium will be our cation, and chlorine will be our anion. So calcium has a 2 plus charge based on the periodic table, since it's in group 2 and chlorine has a minus one charge. So we can take calcium with its two plus charge and chlorine with its one minus charge. And when we're combining two ionic or two ions to figure out what proportion they go with each other, there's a little shortcut. We can take the charges and move them across to become the subscript of the opposite ion. Once we've done that, if need be, we can simplify them, but in this case, we cannot further simplify them. So calcium chloride will be formed in a 1 to 2 ratio of 1 calcium for every 2 chlorines, chlorine ions. And so the chemical formula of calcium chloride is CaCl2. So that's the answer to number 1. Moving on to number two, they're asking us to write the name of the ionic compound KBr. So we have our rules up here. First, we need to start with the cation's name. K is our cation in this case. And K stands is the chemical symbol for potassium. It is here in group one on the periodic table, so we'll start by writing potassium. And our anion is Br, which is the chemical symbol for bromine, which is at the end of the periodic table here with a minus one charge. And since the stem of bromine is bro, we take that stem and then we add ide to the end of it. So the name of KBr would be potassium bromide. So potassium bromide is the answer to number two. Moving on to number three, they're asking us to write the chemical formula for ammonium sulfide. So ammonium sulfide is a little bit different from calcium chloride in that it uses a polyatomic ion, which is an ion in which there is more than one atom that is grouped together and has a cumulative charge. So we can see ammonium is this first one here under the cation section. It has a plus one charge. And we basically follow the same procedure. We just make sure to group NH4 together since it is all one ion. And sulfide tells us that the anion should be sulfur with a two minus charge. So following our shortcut from before, making sure to group all of our NH4 together. We can move the one across to the sulfur and the two across to the ammonium atom ion. And that gives us NH42S. And that cannot be further simplified. So that is our answer for number three.
Lastly, number four asks, what is the name of the compound MgOH2? This is another ionic compound that uses a polyatomic ion. We have OH here under the anions section. And then the cation in this case is magnesium, which is found in group two of the periodic table, and it has a two plus charge. So our cation is magnesium, so we'll start with the name of magnesium, just as it is. And our anion is hydroxide, and it already has iod on the end of it, so we'll just use it as is. So the name of the compound MgOH2 is magnesium hydroxide. So that's the answer to number four.